so welcome to this first talk where, we, where I will present in the Eclipse IDE um, and what we're doing in the project. It will be a high-level presentation about the project. It doesn't show too many features. It shows a little bit what we're working on and what is the community like, assuming that you're not yet participating in the community, or at least some of, some of you. My name is Lars Vogel. Um, I am an Eclipse developer. I'm also in several other positions within the Eclipse project. I'm not getting paid for my work on Eclipse, so it's basically fun and free time I'm investing into a great open source project, which I like. Um, so, let's see. Um, the Eclipse project um, is hosted at the Eclipse Foundation, and the Eclipse Foundation is a legal body which helps other, the Eclipse project, but also other open source projects um, to be successful. It is Eclipse, the Eclipse project was the first project the Eclipse Foundation has, so the name uh, similarities are because it was the first and only project, but the Eclipse Foundation hosts um, several other projects as well. I think 200, 300, I don't know, and it, well, in all different areas. This talk is only about the Eclipse desktop IDE, and um, of course then you have um, what we call the top level project, which is a narrow, scope of an IDE for Java development and Eclipse development and all the other um, projects. And this is a statistic here from the last three months of activities with only, within only the top level project. So the top level project, again, is the Java tooling, which you may enjoy or not. And um, I like to show this graph, as it's, again, the commit statistic of the last three months, because, because it shows how healthy the Eclipse project is. Um, if you look at the individual um, contributor statistics, we have a few people like Alexander um, who, who are doing a lot of work within the project, but we also have a lot of people just delivering a very small patch. So this white area is not a graphical error. It's uh, just a lot of people just providing one or two patches, bringing Eclipse forward, maybe fixing a bug, which is annoying um, for them. Um, you also see, if you look at the companies involved, that we have a lot of companies involved, Red Hat, IBM, Vogella, GmbH, um, but also a lot of people not directly associated with a membership company or not even having committer status. So I think unaffiliated committers and contributors make up to 40% of the project. So it's a really nice open source project to be involved in because it's not only the IBM anymore which drives the top level Eclipse project. If you go back five years, or six years, or eight years, um, <coughs> the core of Eclipse was basically led by one company, IBM. They made all the decisions, they made all the development investment, so it was fair that they were making the decisions. And it was hard to get involved because you were not part of a team. Huh? So patches were not reviewed or ignored, or suggestions were maybe not applied, and so on. And I think it's really nice that we, we over this, we, also have a diverse leadership team for this top level project. So we have um, Alexander from Red Hat, we have myself, and we do have uh, a few, three people from IBM. We also had representatives from Google in there in the last year. And um, it really helps moving the project into what I call real open source um, and not a company dominated open source project. The role of a leadership um, team in the project is to set the guidelines for the rest of the developers. So if um, a developer develops something and nobody disagrees, it just goes into um, the code. But if there is some disagreement, they may bring uh, these issues to us or to the project lead and later to the leadership team, and then we may make decisions for the whole team. Um, for example, we recently had the discussion, um, should we accept code cleaner patches? Um, there was a few developers which were a little bit concerned that that will affect the git blame functionality. So see who, who's line, who has changed this line with the, what commit. And there were two uh, sides. Um, some people wanted to clean up, others wanted to preserve the history. They brought it to us and we decided code cleanup is more important than git history. Well, we don't want dead code. Um, as a direct result of Oracle deciding to release Java every six months, the Eclipse project decided that we release every three months. Uh, <laughs> that is also a little bit the result of the fact that um, the Eclipse Foundation believes that it's legally not possible to support a better release of Java. So if there's Java 12 in development, there are legal things which prevents Eclipse from providing an official build 
where Java 12 is, is involved. So there are always these tricks that you get a feature patch which you can install to still work around with, but as we may not hit exactly the deadline of a Java release, at least you don't have to wait very long time before you get the official Java support. So this fast release cycle enables us to work to support you 9, 10, 11, 12 once it's out. Yeah? Wasn't this supposed to be rolling since now or since the release? The question was, wasn't this supposed to be a rolling release with Eclipse? We do have daily builds of Eclipse, but we put a little bit more effort in testing before an official release. We also have a cool down phase. It's now only two or three weeks where we don't develop new features, we focus on testing and so on, so that you can then enjoy a stable release. But I'm using the daily build, of course, and it's stable and fast. Um, we also, for example, this enables us, if a new JUnit version comes out, uh, to support it. We also dropped the silly names. Um, We're not silly. <laughs> <laughs> Some people love these names. Like, silly people are customers, I'm sorry. Um, um, but the issue with the names was is that um, not all people could remember them um, or, or pinpoint them to a year, and I'm one of these persons, so I have no idea when Luna was released. I have basically no idea when, when Master was released. I only know it's very old. Um, and our customer also didn't get any indication uh, that we were using a very, very old Eclipse. So people were saying, oh, my Eclipse is so slow and bad. I switched to another IDE, which is not what we want. <laughs> um, so we, we moved away from this naming scheme, and now we have year and month, like Ubuntu has. So let's say in 2023, if you start your Eclipse from 2018, you feel like you see it on the splash screen, and maybe you feel, oh, I should update. Maybe, maybe the things has involved in four or five years. Well, so I really like that. Carsten doesn't. Um, so I think we, 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 we're doing well. We're getting, we're getting faster every three months uh, and release. Um, it's also very motivating for the team to work on stuff or for contributors and other companies to contribute uh, because if you do something, you don't have to wait a year, in the worst case, to get it into an official build. Maybe you only have to wait, in the worst case scenario, three months, but typically a little bit faster. So um, that's a little bit for organization. Uh, of course, we have priority topics. So the development team likes certain things to work on. And uh, definitely one of the topics is performance and stability. Um, it's, uh, I think the last two or three years, um, Eclipse has been significantly improved in performance. The worst release was Eclipse Mars. And yet, I don't remember when it was. I think five or six years ago. But Mars was horrible. It was slow. It was buggy. It, basically, a lot of people actually started to dislike um, Eclipse in this release. There were some reasons for that, because it was a completely redesign of the underlying framework. Um, but ever since, the team has worked on this. And I think I remember Jonas last year trying out the latest release. I said, whoa, this is really fast. And um, we're trying to do this with every, every release. There are a lot of small things. Um, for example, we're switching from um, synchronous layouting to asynchronous layouting. Not, not stopping the UI just and waiting for some, some better path. We're removing old dead code, maybe checking for a compatibility thing, which has not been there since 10 years and so on. And that really um, speeds up the whole thing. To give you an example, um, this is my email, Gmail, which I now refresh with F5. And at the same time, I'm starting Eclipse. It, email refreshes a little bit faster, just a little bit. When, when starting my Eclipse. I'm not sure what Google did. <laughs> it used, Gmail used to be lightning fast, but they introduced this, this splash screen, and now every time I hit F5 in the browser while reading my email, I said, oh, fuck. Um, so Eclipse now starts almost as fast as I can update my, my um, Gmail browser. Um, we're working on it uh, to make it faster. Maybe Google also wants to make it faster again. I, I don't know. But, um, Really nice, like a few seconds. Um, there are other areas of improvements. Um, for example, um, Reddit is now working on the Maven tooling, actually together with the um, Apache project to bring in much better um, Maven tooling support. Um, also, the Git um, tooling has been super fast these days. Um, they're basically doing everything asynchronously now, not, not blocking the UI anymore. So it's really hard now these days with the latest um, Git support in Eclipse to get a UI freeze from the Git tooling. There will be more 
on performance, and I think I have a slide on that, um, indeed. Um, so Carsten will be talking about what the project did in the past um, to improve his performance. He, he showed basically how, how we worked and, and so on, so to so, so join this. We're also um, trying to give you better and asynchronous code completion. At the moment, code completion in Eclipse, in most cases, is synchronously. So if you have a lot of JAR files in your class path, it can be that code completion blocks the UI. This should be gone once these patches go in. We also have code completion in places where you would expect uh, code completion. For example, the workspace selection dialog, you can now have code completion to select the path you want, and we want to introduce this on, on several other places. Um, also available since last release is an option, a little bit hidden, details are in this bug report, to remove a big lock while building your workspace. The current default way of the Java tooling is you have, let's say, 200 projects in your workspace and you say, clean workspace, build all. It basically locks the workspace and you cannot work in parallel on anything while it's building. Um, again, from Red Hat, um, there's now the possibility to set the, the locking rule and you can set it to project, for example. So one project is built by Java tools and you still can edit unrelated other projects. Uh, it will be a little bit ironed out and, and hopefully be available also via the user interface. So very helpful for big installations and, and um, big workspaces. Now, also we would like to improve the usability um, of Eclipse. And um, one of the things which has been introduced in the last release is code minings. This is basically, I think, the idea stolen from Visual Studio Code. Um, it is the idea that um, you add information to the text editor without, of course, changing the text editor, which gives information to the um, user about its, his or her code. So for example, I see now with this code mining, which is not in the text editor at all, it just um, displayed here, that the table viewer is actually referred to six times, uh, five times. And I can also click on it and I see the references. It makes it much easier to, to find public methods which are not used anymore. So you have a public method, you basically have no idea who's using it. Now it will go through your workspace and show you for the methods if they're used or not. That is default. We also have an um, Angelo Serre working on more things. And that is a feature from IntelliJ, which you may know in, uh, IntelliJ can, or by default, shows you the parameter na names for any co calls, also available for Eclipse. So if you say, I have no idea how grid layout works and what does one mean, you can actually enable it and it'll tell you this is actually the name of the parameter is numcall, mm -hmm. and then you get more information about it. Um, my favorite feature in IntelliJ is actually the debug feature, which shows you the debug information. Um, while, you, while you debug, instead of like using the variable view, also available via this plugin from Angelo, then you basically also in Eclipse, you see again via code mining the value of the, uh, the two-string method, actually, uh, of the element which you're debugging here. Very useful, because for, for a lot of cases, you see immediately in the text editor, um, what, what you're actually debugging without looking at any additional things. We, const we constantly, yeah, Tobias? <coughs> um, the question from Tobias was, when will this uh, debug features come to standard Eclipse? And um, let me park this question when I talk about community involvement. Um, so we're also constantly improving the dark theme. Dark theme, in my opinion, looks already very good on Eclipse. Uh, sorry, on, on Linux. There's not so nice on Windows and okay on Mac. But there have been changes also being reviewed at the moment. For example, scroll bar under Windows is currently not themable, uh, but Microsoft did something there, so we may also be able to leverage that to theme most of the scroll bars. So in every release, the dark theme gets, gets nicer. If you're a Sublime user, you may enjoy this minimap which gives you a little overview of your, of your source code and you can navigate it. It's a structural view of your source code and that is also available since last year from Eclipse, from the latest release in December. Um, and one other thing we plan to have in this release is an API for non-blocking notification. Um, I basically hate uh, blocking notification in all tools I, I use. And so this is a dialog I don't like to see in Eclipse. I push something, I get a information that something pushed and I need to actively close it. 
Um, we, we hopefully will bring in this release an API where you can have like a little notification window inline, not blocking. And once we have this, we can remove more of these blocking dialogues, which, which typically only annoying and not, not so helpful. Um, then, of course, there is also, there are other <laughs> languages out there than Java. I think the Java support is uh, very good in Eclipse, uh, maybe similar in all IDEs. But, of course, there are new languages invented every week. Uh, and um, this new language needs also support for their popular um, tooling. And um, fortunately, Microsoft has invented this language server protocol where we will have several talks today about. And the language server protocol enables us or any, any tooling to support very fast editor support for a programming language. Um, so, yeah, Jonas will give um, also later a talk about, uh, about this, um, how difficult it is. Uh, just, I don't want to steal this thunder, but it's, it's very fast for Eclipse at least to build support for new language if there's an existing language server available. So language server is a locally running component written in whatever language the team choose to select. There's a standardized protocol which you can then use to communicate and adding support for Eclipse is, re is really easy. Um, Red Hat will most likely give you the best JavaScript support available in the world in Eclipse um, because they planning to migrate the Visual Studio Code language server for JavaScript and, and not migrate it, but also reuse it in Eclipse. So the JavaScript tooling at the moment in Eclipse, which is not good, um, is based on a custom implementation in Java, but um, soon the default downloads will switch to a language server-based um, implementation, and then we will use the uh, Visual Studio Code language server, and then you have all these, if you're using Visual Studio Code for JavaScript, then you have a similar support in Eclipse. Um, also, we are working on Dart support, if you're interested in Dart, fancy new language, uh, not really new, but um, at the moment pushed by, by Google. Um, we're working a little bit uh, together with the main architect there for, for the language server. Um, looking forward to this, and Jonas again will demonstrate that. Um, now, Tobias asked the question, um, when will this debug feature um, come into Eclipse? And the answer of, uh, to this question is it really depends, because um, as we heard maybe yesterday from Mark Reinhold in his talk, um, if you do a lot of things, you also typically have a lot of saying in an open source project. And that is definitely true for Eclipse. And we heard yesterday from Mark Reinhold, it's also true for OpenJDK. Um, so it depends a little bit, Tobias. If someone shows up and does the work to polish this uh, debug information, then it will be integrated. The person responsible for the debug component is very interesting in this feature. Um, so it just takes someone to find the time to polish it a little bit and, and bring it up and then integrate it. Technology-wise, everything is there. Um, and also the implementation is there. It just needs to be migrated and, and so on. I actually like this um, because it's a I think it's a very positive thing because whenever you are decided or determined to, to do something, something is really annoying, you can start um, working on it and, and helping us to improve Eclipse. As it's not a um, company-driven open source project, it also feels better, to me at least, to invest my free time into this tooling. Which brings up the question, how can you actually contribute to Eclipse? If you're interested, who, who did contribute to Eclipse? Maybe sign of hands. Let's say a small group. And um, if someone tried to do this a few years ago, maybe this person got frustrated. It is much easier now these days. For example, to build the Eclipse SDK, you only have to issue these commands into the command line. And then a few hours later, <laughs> you will have uh, the Eclipse SDK. That is co uh, a completely change to the process five, six, eight years ago, where it basically was impossible to build Eclipse if you were not working for IBM and had access to the internal um, IBM servers. <coughs> so if you just want to clone the code, maybe try something out, you can actually build it. Um, you don't have to. You can also just provide a patch. 
Um, we do regular hackathons in Hamburg, and the typical setup for being ready to give a contribution is, from our experience, five to ten minutes. So you basically need to have a user, you need to sign an Eclipse license agreement that it is actually, you are actually allowed to contribute code to the Eclipse project, and then you clone your repository, then this of course takes time depending on your network bandwidth, and then you're ready uh, to contribute. You import the projects and you can basically code. Um, you don't have to figure all these nasty details out how to run the tests. You can take your patch, push it to our review system, and um, it will be taken by our review system, create, we're using Garrett for that, and it will take your patch and start a build process, so it will basically build the whole repository, run all, all the unit tests we have automatically, and then report if it's, the patch is technically okay. And then um, if, that is, if that happened, so if your patch is technically okay, typically a person, depending on the area you're trying to contribute, will we look at the patch and give you feedback or directly integrate it. So especially if you're doing just a Java doc typo Garrett patch, that goes in uh, extremely fast. Of course, if you're doing very complex things, and someone needs to actually take the time to look at it. But it's, it's, it's a really nice process, and it has also accelerated significantly the development speed of Eclipse. Um, we basically, if I do something, and I, I basically look only at the local scope, and then I commit it, push it to Garrett, and 20 minutes later or 40 minutes later, depending on the repository, I get the feedback if I broke any tests. And then I can just uh, look at the broken tests and, and, um, um, and while I'm working on something else. So it's, it's really nice. Um, if you, who's familiar with Garrett, per sign of hands? Okay. Um, it's a little bit similar to GitHub pull requests. But I think it's optimized also for the review process. Pull requests are nice for contributing, but not so nice for reviewing. Um, and Garrett, I think, is a good trade-off for both sides. It's really good for reviewing, but also good for contributing. And um, helped us to speed up the project quite significantly. So in summary, um, I think the Eclipse community is very successfully and has been successfully in the, in the last years to get broader and implement more ideas. Um, to me personally, it's very important that my tools are fast. So I'm very happy to see um, Eclipse getting faster and faster. And um, also the UX um, is getting way better than, um, than it used to be. I'm not sure if you remember where the restart button was in Eclipse a few years ago. It was, I think, below the print button and convert tab delimiters. So if you looked at the file menu, and there was exit here, and restart was here, and above there was print, and tab delimiter. And it was just ridiculous. Nobody would expect such a thing. So we're working on these silly things, but also notification, minimap, and so on. So we're hoping to give you a better user experience. And by that, I think I have a few, or two minutes for questions. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so basically the question was, um, why didn't Eclipse in the past package its stuff um, in a reasonable way? Um, I think this is, has been solved a few years ago. You find on the download side of Eclipse, you find the, what we call EPPs, um, Eclipse, pack it's an Eclipse Packaging Project, and then you find a download targeted for Java developers. And that includes Maven, Gradle tooling, uh, Git tooling. So it's a basically... What we think a Java developer needs included, you still can add other things, um, but there's also a um, download for Java EE developers and, and so on. So just use one of these bundled downloads. I personally prefer it a different way. I start with the smallest Eclipse I can have, and then I add the features I, I